flowers. Okay, so the, the um, fibers, the wool, is now in position and as you can see, it, I've had nothing else than putting it together and it's holding on already because wool fibers have little like little hooks on it. and now these hooks need to be like opened up and I need to give the felt the chance or the wool the chance to felt together. The first process in felt making is felting and then comes the fulling which means it holds together forever. Mm -hmm. So what we need is warm water with some soap in. So you're basically creating a chemical reaction with the wool yeah. but with ordinary soap and water. Yeah. Now the one has a chance to open up. Now I'll wet the wool. I can check on the other side. So you're using the plastic to stop your hands from moving the fibres around yeah. too much. Oops. And at this moment I can still change my design. I can take things off, I can add things. This is where you're creating the shape that yeah, you want. Yeah, I can create the shape I want, make it bigger, smaller, however I feel about this. So I'm going to show it right now. So I'll turn it back because I can see my design better. Now I have to massage the fibers to make sure they're holding on. They are holding on at the moment easily, but I need to make sure they're really holding on and they are like massaged together and tangled up properly. And that's why I now massage the soap and the water into the fibers. And that's why I use bubble wrap because you know you have a rough texture. You can use also a bamboo mat, but it's a little smelly. And you're clearly not from Suffolk, Evelyn. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So where are you from and why did you come here? Well, I come from Germany, from Berlin, and I came here because my husband is English. So we had to make a decision where we want to live. Right. And that was that Ipswich. Oh, well, we definitely very happy that you came here. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm hoping it starts to hold on because the felt is very thinly laid out. As you can see, we have a close up of that. Yeah, hands on. Mm -hmm. And now I can actually take it off. I have it in my hand. Now I use more soap. And I use the soap like a cream. Now I use my hands to carry on felting because I personally feel I have more control about this. And I can really feel where the fibers are. I can pull and push them a little bit. And I can feel how quickly or slowly it felt, especially if I felt non-merino wool, English wool, or now here I've got the fibers in, I have to see that they felt in. And I'm carrying on massaging the fibers and taking them to stick together. So what's the next process once you've done this? This is properly? still the felting process and in a few minutes. When this is holding on better, then I do the fulling, then it gets a little bit tougher. For the wood, it's all very gentle. When you do felting, you start very gentle. Mm. And then you get really, really tough. And then it's really hard at the end. You can have it pretty. You see, now I'm starting to massage. Oh, so you're not being much tougher with it. It's holding on. And, and you're doing all this in your living room, aren't you? With all your fabulous walls <laughs> and. And then yeah, yeah, they're all surrounding me with other works. That's what I've done earlier. And these are ones that, so eventually your felting will turn into something beautiful like this, yeah. which is a brooch that you can wear, a flower. And, and also what you have to take into account, the felting and then the fulling shrinks the wool. That's the idea. And that's why it holds together. So it's much smaller at the end. Mm -hmm. You see, I'm starting off relatively big. Because it's denser. Yeah, so it gets together. And it crinkles up, which you can see, and then you felt other materials in. So now this is quite, as you can see, holding on as a. So what's the fulling? You've talked now, about now the fulling. Now comes the fulling, which is really. Oh wow! 
So in a, in a strange way, you're kneading this like you would a bread, and yeah. you're actually creating. Well, it's the washing machine effect. Now. Yes, you're you're. And by doing this again, you're... I can control in which direction I fed because fading goes always in. And already it's shrunk quite significantly yes. compared to yes. the one next to it. And now how long and how hard I felt, how much it shrinks. And because the flowers are quite delicate, I don't need to shrink them that much. But if I do a bag, for example, um, or a pair of slippers, obviously that's a different, slightly different. And now comes the muscles. <laughs> so you're being very tough with it. Yeah. To start with, you're being very delicate, and now you're actually really working it. So once you've, okay. your products are actually very tough. They are very, yeah, very yeah. So can, durable products durable, yes. that people can use again and again without any risk or worry about the things. Yeah, so this is already smaller. I'll leave that for the time being. Now I'll concentrate on the second one. Now different techniques, obviously, I can also felt immediately some little stems or 3D mm -hmm. effect. I can, I can do that. And again, starting off quite gentle. Because your brooches are very beautiful. What you do is you add a lot of detail afterwards as well, don't you? Yeah, you can embellish that afterwards, but I try when I use the wool to fill everything in to start with and then uh, be inspired again by the the shape and also the colours and also the texture of the actual pro uh, flower petal. If I bend this end later, if I cut in, if I twist it on something to make the flower, it's not, I, I haven't planned yet what the flower mm. look like that will come when all the bits are ready. Okay. Thank you. Oh, I'm getting 